Today is a celebration of an event that changed the course of St. Joseph County, Michigan. 50 years ago today, to the day, Monday morning, February the 4th, 1969, winter semester classes commenced in this new building. So I am not going to try to introduce every person. Uh, many of them I do know uh, pretty well at this point after being here a few years, but I will ask the folks that were here that day uh, to make remarks if they desire. This is your day. We are celebrating you, the faculty, staff, and students, and community members that were here 50 years ago, had this vision to build this college and change the course of higher education in St. Joseph County. So, i just pretty sure that Professor Emeritus Lee Thornton probably wants to be first. I have a picture of uh, Tom Soper and Dave Greenhall and I walking up the walk the very, very first time we came out here. And to say that we were surprised <laughs> would be an understatement. But it, it's a place that worked out well. And, and I think it's a, a place that has served the community well. Uh, St. Joseph County did well with this college. And we certainly did well by uh, the college ourselves. Thank you. I'm Dick Slimgen. I was the uh, original guidance counselor with Dick Cripe. When we moved over here, it was, it was cold and windy. It was not as nice as it was today. The faculty members, we had a flatbed truck. The faculty members had to move their own stuff. And so we would sign up in shifts of two. Dick Cripe and I came, we signed up for a shift. And I think we follow, I think you guys had a, uh, the flat bug, flat dead truck before us, and you came over before, and then we got to use it. So we go over and you know we load up all our stuff in White Pigeon and bring it over here, and we carry it in. You know, the building of Glen Oaks began in a very modest manner, and it's a do-it-yourself project. I can remember Bruce Swinburne, the guy that you just heard from, came into my office one day before Glen Oaks opened and said, hey, Dick, you know what we need? What? A catalog. All the colleges get a catalog, and we don't have one. Don't you think we should have one, too? Yeah, we should. <laughs> so that's the way Glen Oaks got built. But it was a very exciting time for us. I want to just mention one other quick thing, and I'm sorry for taking so long. But right where we're standing was the Glen Oaks, our original bookstore in this building. And we had four by eight panels that were bolted together into a rectangle that was about 20 feet by 30 feet right in here. I'm right in the middle of what was the bookstore. And the bookstore was not even secure. Uh, the first day that we had the bookstore open, somebody climbed over the top of the paneling and stole some books. <laughs> uh, so we had to make some improvements and stuff like that. But it was a real makeshift kind of an operation. That had to last us for a while until we got some improvements made. But uh, that, I hope that gives you a little bit of a flavor of, of what it's like to pioneer a school. I should have learned a lot myself. Thanks very much. The illustrious superintendent of Burr Oak Schools, Terry Conklin, holds every athletic record known to man. <laughs> Let me help you out here. <laughs> Well, thank you. First off, I'd like to say to Mr. Hash, thank you for having the foresight to see that we have a Glen Oaks in this community, in this county, and how it's played an important part in everybody's life. So I personally thank you for that. So, and uh, if all the professors and things from, if you remember me back then, um, raise your hand real quick. I knew who was here. I just thought I'd have to do that. So I want to thank you, too, because you all had an important part in my life. So I was here for, on and off for six years, got to play every sport. I was captain of the first baseball team, played with Howie on the golf team, so <laughs> didn't play basketball, but we even ran track one year. Uh, Golnick was here, Coach Golnick. But <clears throat> I just want to say, let me say this too. Is there any other educators in the building? Just raise your hand real quick. Thank you for being an educator, because today's 
in this in, in this world today, it's a difficult job to do. And I thank everybody for doing that. I try to make sure I always thank teachers for being teachers and, and custodians for being custodians. And they're all part of an education process for our kids. So I think that's great. Back to here, I went to White Pigeon School. Came out here, I thought this was a Taj Mahal. I, <laughs> you know, from White Pigeon to here, it was great. It was just a, it was a fantastic experience and it has been for me over the years. You know, I've been in education for over 40 years and I've been in this county for about 37 of those years. And the impact that Glen Oaks has had on so many kids is phenomenal. I mean, it is just fantastic. I try to, I try to encourage kids all the time to come out here and go to school. Um, right now, and I don't, want, I don't know what Dave's going to say later, but I think we have like 500 high school kids out here right now taking classes and doing CTE programs. That's pretty close. Think about that. That's a lot. You know, between uh, early middle college and those are kids that are, that are going to graduate after their fifth year in high school with an associate's degrees, awesome. I mean, it's just great for our kids. So everything that, that's happened out here at Glen Oaks has helped this county grow and prosper and made it a great place for people to live. And uh, I can't say enough positive things about it. Well, I'm Barb Gray. My husband, Robert Gray, was the original faculty member here, taught music and later on some computers. Um, as you were talking about the person who said, we need a catalog, we had Bob Gray who said, we needed an alma mater. And we have in my family, we all agreed this is where this needs to be. The original draft of his writing of the Glen Oaks alma mater. This was written in October of 1972. So in the, I'd like to give this to you. And in the, the emblem here, of course, it says equality, excellence, and opportunity, which were included in the song. So we've had this, um, and we'd like to present it. It belongs here at Glen Oaks in your Hall of Memories, and so we'd like for you to have Thank this. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I graduated Sturgis High School in 1954. Went in the Kirsch Company, went through the tool and buy apprenticeship classes, and then I went to uh, General Eisenhower, President Eisenhower requested my service, which I didn't care much about at the time, but I'm glad I did do it. I graduated in 1973. My son graduated from here, went on to Eastern, graduated from Eastern. I have a grandson that graduated from Glen Oaks, and he went on to Western and graduated from Western. He now works for the St. Joe County Sheriff's Department as a road parole officer. None of that would have happened if I hadn't been for Glen Oaks. You're right, Terry, we're not quite as uh, mobile as we used to be. And it was really nice to hear Lee Thornton, Mr. Thornton. That's the shortest time I've ever seen him in a podium in my entire life. Because I had class with him at 8 o'clock in the morning, and he started at 8 o'clock. Not 8.01, 8 o'clock. And the door was closed. And if you didn't get there a little before 8, you were out. Well, that's how I learned to play euchre back here because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't the most prompt person at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I still play euchre. I don't know, I don't remember a lot about history, but I play a lot of euchre. Okay? And when you retire and go to Florida, euchre is probably a lot better than what, the, what you remember of history. Okay? But I was good at that. My experience at Glen Oaks was wonderful. We had a good time. I still have a lot of friends from those days, and that's the important thing. As we get older, friends are pretty important. Thank you, Glen Oaks. Thank you, all, your, all the instructors, and thanks again for having us. Thank you. Well, Coach Soper, I'm up here for two reasons. He was my first cross-country coach on the first team out here and I've been running ever since. I don't know if I'm running from him or from what I'm running from, but I, 
he taught me to love running, and um, I really appreciate everything that he did. Because I know he kept active in it. He's a fine example of a coach and as uh, a runner. And I went on to be a cross-country coach at Bronson for a while and coach basketball there. I was on the first team here. And I'm here up here for two reasons, though. I'm still looking for my hair. And uh, they, I never ran the hurdles before in high school, and they were going to teach me out here. So the only way they could teach me is put me in the hallway. And it wasn't down by the gym. And they said to keep your head down. Well, the first time I didn't keep my head down very well, and that's probably why I'm bald to this day, because it's still on that ceiling up there. And, but I learned quickly out here. Uh, we had a fine staff. Yeah, it was a, a fine place to start, and it started me on my teaching and coaching career, which I really enjoyed at Bronson for all those years I was there. And um, this is a great place to start, and we're trying to get kids out here, and we're going to keep on pushing because we've done a good job of keeping this place going. So I thank you for everything. Morning. Uh, I was a student first year at White Pigeon. I was a little bit of an oddity. I was considered probably the first foreign exchange student. I came out from New York. <laughs> so it was really intriguing because I got accused of a lot of talking so fast. You know, I had to learn to slow down my speech out here. You know, um, the thing I remember the most, and there's lots of talk about sports and sports are great, but the education I got in those first two years was really quite amazing. I remember coming out here that next year and uh, the space out here was just, just gorgeous. You know, I thought there is so much room for expansion out here and, and it's been put to good use. The other thing that impacted me so much, here I'm coming from New York. You got a picture, an old hippie here hair halfway down my back, beard twice as long. And uh, I was welcomed by this whole community. Here's this kid from New York, you know? And uh, I was so enamored by that, and I stuck around. Uh, I worked out here for a long time at Essex Wire in Three Rivers. Just a wonderful thing. You don't have an opportunity to celebrate 50 years of anything today that often. And so it was really wonderful. But. You know, the, the same people that I was so enamored with then are still here. And that's what makes this such a wonderful school. Wonderful. Thank you. As you look at this board behind me, in the 50 years ticked off by decades, is the, the changes that have come about at the college. Some people say, the old saying that the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, you have to have both. There's a sameness in the tradition of the people who put the school together. I remember that first day we got together for classes at White Pigeon. Norm Haas went to the center of the high school basketball court. There were students seated in the bleachers and Norm like a cheerleader, got everybody to get up and yell how happy they were be to, to be at Glen Oaks Community College. It was quite a moment. And that kind of spirit has extended. But the thing that is most impressive to me right now is what the current staff, the direction of David DeVere, is doing to make sure that this school is ready for another 50 years. The changes that are occurring architecturally are probably welcome. But what Dr. DeVere has done to guarantee that the school is established and that the face of the school is ready for the era in which we live is a welcome, welcome change. And I would like to thank him on behalf of those of us who went before for everything that he has done 
to give the school a shot at another 50 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for me, this day is about thanking you guys uh, because what you did for this college, Norm and, and the staff, was tremendous. And I think the impact that you had, you know, on a guy like me, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't get emotional. Uh, but, you know, this place has been really something. And not just for me, but there's a lot of kids that in this county that couldn't afford college that have been here and their lives are better because of it. And I think that's what this is about. So thank you guys. Um, I'm fond of the three C's. Um, cherish the past, celebrate the present, and create the future. And I think that this is what this day is about. Cherishing our past, celebrating our present, and creating our future. We really appreciate all of you coming. Uh, and hopefully, all of you added value to your life today with this experience. Uh, because that's what we do here at Glen Oaks. We add value to individuals' lives. And therefore, value to our community, to our country, and to the world. I just close with um, the last thing that Gunnar Rickerts told the board at that presentation. He said, this facility will change the future course of St. Joseph County, Michigan. And I think today, we're starting to see from all these testimonies how much that is true. And I think we may want to think about renaming the concourse to the Agra. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy, share, thank you. <laughs>